Well, 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 what do we have here? As you probably know, Apple's M2 Max MacBook Pros have only just come out, and today I've got their PC counterparts. This is the new MSI Raider series, and this guy packs a punch. We're talking the brand new Intel 13980HK and the brand new NVIDIA 4090 mobile GPU. This thing ought to be a beast. So today we're gonna find out how it stacks up against the Apple competition. I think we gotta start with an unboxing and this should be very interesting. Whoa, holy moly. I've made videos talking about how the 16 inch MacBook Pro is big, but it looks like a toy compared to this thing. I'm assuming I'm gonna need an absolute monster of a power supply. Holy crap! This is enormous! 329 watts of power. That's how much this thing is putting out. So, yeah, this is... We're in a different ball game here, folks. Oh yeah, that's... That is a big, big boy. That's the size of my entire torso. Let's fire it up. I honestly... Cannot wait to see how this comparison shakes out. So I'm gonna set this up, and we're gonna put them side by side. Oh, look at that. I got some little rainbow lights. Sorry, I got distracted. We're gonna put these side by side, and we're gonna see what happens. Holy crap! This is honestly one of the most insane comparisons that I have ever done on this channel. This laptop blew my freaking mind. This thing is an absolute monster, and yet, this comparison is not cut and dry. I have a hunch that a number of people in the audience are either hoping for Apple demolishes Intel and Nvidia, or Apple is trash, Intel and Nvidia destroys M2 Max. And to those people, I say all in good time because there are areas where both of these computers demolish each other. Oh boy, isn't that fun. But the first thing that we have to address is the elephant in the room. And th this is the elephant. It's enormous. It's a 17 inch laptop competing against a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now these devices, while both representing the most powerful in their respective classes, for PC and for Mac are not necessarily targeted in the same way. The MacBook Pro, well, it's a MacBook Pro. It's the go anywhere, do anything computer that's designed to be powerful, but also efficient, have a great display, be usable for all sorts of creative tasks. The MSI on the other hand, this guy is power, power, power. Everything here is designed to deliver as much performance as humanly possible. Whether that's for productivity or, as you can tell from the visuals, gaming, that's up to you. But, let's first go over some of the essentials with these laptops. This is the MSI Raider GE78HX, and it comes equipped with the Intel Core i9-13980HX, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop GPU, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a two terabyte NVMe SSD, and a 17 inch quad HD 240 hertz display. And the price for all that, a nice round $3,999. And in the other corner, we've got the 16 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro with the 12 core CPU, 38 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte SSD, and a 16 inch Liquid Retina XDR display. And that's gonna cost you $3,899. And before I dazzle you guys with some benchmark numbers, we do need to take a moment to just appreciate the differences in these designs. The MacBook Pro definitely prioritizes being a little bit smaller, coming in at 4.7 pounds compared to the Raider at 6.83. But that being said, the 17 inch display gives you a noticeable amount of extra screen real estate and you're not losing anything to the notch like you are on the MacBook Pro. However, 
When you turn the lights down and you look at them side by side, it becomes immediately apparent that Apple's mini LED XDR display takes the cake here. I mean, look at the black levels, look at the vibrance of those colors. Sure, you don't have the 240 hertz refresh rate of the MSI, but those colors really are spectacular. Comparing the other interface devices, however, honestly, I think both keyboards are fantastic and Apple, well, they're just unmatched in trackpads. However, the MSI's trackpad is remarkably good, one of the best that I've used on the Windows side. So already you can start to see some of the trade-offs in how these machines are positioned. So how do they compare? Well, let's start with Cinebench R23 and, well, the Raider is an absolute monster. I have never seen a score this high on a laptop ever. It was quite simply 30,000. That's, that's like Threadripper numbers. That even beats my Core i9-12900K water-cooled desktop PC. That only managed the paltry 25K. Don't get me wrong, the M2 Max is a powerful chip, 14,750, but the new i9-13980HK is more than double that performance. Although, mind you, it is also double the power consumption. When you start a Cinebench run, CPU power usage peaks at almost 200 watts. And by the time things get going, it settles in at 120 to 150. Not too long ago, those were desktop chip numbers. But we are seeing them in a laptop. Oh, and by the way, the M2 Max only uses 35 watts. And if you're wondering, gee, Luke, is that loud? Well, let me give you an idea of what a MacBook Pro sounds like midway through a Cinebench run. Okay, and now the PC. Ah, okay, right. So I think you can start to see what I'm talking about when I mention trade-offs. But of course, not everything is about CPU, and I am really, really interested in getting under the hood and checking out the RTX 4090 Mobile. This is an absolute behemoth of a card, as you would expect in a machine that is pretty much a behemoth in everything. So how does it do in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme? Well, you might not be all that surprised to learn that the RTX 4090 significantly outperforms our M2 Max, an over 20,000 point advantage. Now for a more real world scenario, I fired up Rise of the Tomb Raider to see how that performs on both devices. Now this being an older game and one that's famously Mac compatible, I actually saw about as much difference between the M2 Max and the 4090 as there was between the M1 Max and the M2 Max. Well, uh, no surprises there. The RTX 4090, which on its own uses more power than this entire MacBook Pro, does in fact outperform it, and by no small amount. Now, one thing you might have noticed in that test is that the benchmark also loaded slightly faster on the MSI. Well, I ran a SSD speed test and sure enough, we do have a slightly faster SSD in the MSI Raider compared to the MacBook Pro. But of course, both of these are ridiculously fast and will be more than fine. But what's not more than fine is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Because honestly, if you want to go down this rabbit hole comparing both of these, you're going to be very limited on the games that you can run. And I had early access to an RTX 4090 mobile. So I, I put the Mac aside for a second just to see how insane this thing is. The Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign was running really, really smooth. I maxed out the settings at 2560 by 1600 and I was still getting over 100 FPS. I also ran Cyberpunk 2077 at completely maxed settings as well. Here with DLSS on, we're seeing 60 to 80 FPS, and I was even able to plug into my TV with the same settings, but bump the resolution up to 4K, and we're still almost getting 60 FPS with maxed out settings. 
on a laptop. Now I did notice a bit of stuttering here and there, which you can see with our minimum FPS here, but I'm going to chalk that up to really early pre-release drivers and hope that it gets better when these things ship. This thing is absolutely bonkers. And I feel like I just keep saying that over and over and over again, but it's true. I have a previous generation MSI Z16, and that thing has an Alder Lake Core i7 and an RTX 3080, so it's a pretty high-end machine. And this thing is absolutely dumping all over it. It's even dumping all over my RTX 3090 and Core i9-12900K desktop. That's how crazy this thing is. But now I want to try to reel things back in a little bit, get back down to earth. We've looked at some CPU and GPU benchmarks, we've looked at some games. Let's talk productivity, because this is an area where these machines can actually be used by the same subset of people. If we're talking about Blender, there are loads of people that are going to be cross-shopping devices like this. So how do they compare? Well, in the classroom CPU test, surprise, surprise, the MSI was noticeably faster than the M2 Max, but not by as wide a margin as you would expect from our earlier Cinebench runs. Now, interestingly enough, the 13980HK is actually tied with my 12900K from my desktop PC. Switching over to the GPU, the 4090 really stretches its legs here. 9.99 seconds compared to 49 seconds on the M2 Max. And notice once again the 4090 laptop basically tied with a 3090 desktop. And in the BMW scene, same story. 22 seconds for the M2 Max goes down to five and a half. I just don't even know what to say, folks. This laptop is outperforming my 12900K RTX 3090 desktop. And it's leaving the MacBook Pro for dead. But one area where I think we'd all agree the M2 Max is going to shine is video editing. Now, as you probably know, I'm a Final Cut editor, which means a PC isn't really in the picture for me. But Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, all of these are compatible on both systems. So I fired up a timeline in Premiere with my tried and true 30 minute 4K 60 FPS 10 bit clip. And well, the M2 Max got the win that it's been waiting for. The Premiere render was done in 10 minutes and 56 seconds compared to 11 minutes and 18 seconds on the MSI. This is a pretty impressive result given that we've established how much extra horsepower the MSI is working with. But don't fear PC enthusiasts, you don't have to give up your crown yet because the MSI finished the export of this timeline a full 7 minutes before Apple Silicon. This one was really, really interesting to me because the PC has been dumping all over Apple Silicon for ages. And then we get to this render and all of a sudden Apple Silicon wins and then loses in the export. It's very, very specific, but those hardware encoders really do work. Now, I know at this point there are going to be comments saying that this is an unfair comparison. The Apple Silicon machine has specific hardware acceleration designed to make that task faster. And therefore, you really can't compare it to a machine that doesn't have those. And while I see your point, I disagree. I think if you're gonna buy one of these machines, you care more about how fast it actually is and not whether it's cheating to be that fast. Plus, you could very easily argue the same exact thing against the PC. You could say, hey, I get that this thing is faster than the Apple Silicon Mac in a lot of these cases, but it does so while using over 300 watts of power. The power brick is the size of my head. Not to mention the fact that if you want to achieve this striking performance, you have to do it well plugged in. If we go all the way back to Cinebench R23, what happens when both computers are unplugged? Well, first of all, take a look at the comparison of the MSI plugged in on the left and unplugged on the right. It's visibly slower. And yet, the MacBook Pro, well, that's exactly the same. And sure enough, by the time things were done, our MacBook Pro score was exactly the same, but the MSI went down from 30,000 to 11,000. So we're looking at about a third of the performance when running on battery 
versus being plugged in. That has a significant impact on our graph from earlier because we had the 13980HK as the most powerful CPU, but unplugged the laptop and now it's the weakest. It's not even that much faster than a regular M2 chip. I also went ahead and reran that Premiere render. You can probably already see how much faster the M2 Max is, but when all was said and done, what was previously a 20 second difference is now an eight minute plus difference in render time. And by the way, that whole test was conducted from 100% battery. When we're done, the MacBook Pro was at 90% and the PC, well, that was at 42%. So we're in a very interesting predicament, wouldn't you agree? On the one hand, the MSI Raider is an undeniably faster laptop. For any task, except for video editing, that you can do on both of these devices, almost certainly the MSI will be faster. It is just insane. But I would argue that the M2 Max MacBook Pro is a better overall laptop because it is actually portable and usable on the go. Now, personally for me, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is even a little on the big side, let alone this guy. But I was recently in Japan for a couple of weeks and I actually brought my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro because this guy wasn't out yet. And I was actually on a bullet train editing a video for this channel on this laptop over a four hour period. And I only used like 30% of my battery in Final Cut Pro. That is a portable device. Whereas from my testing, I don't even know if this machine would have made it that amount of time. So really it just comes down to your use case. Let's say you're a freelance videographer. You need to be on the move, using your computer to color grade, edit on the fly, check your footage and whatnot. The MacBook Pro is the obvious choice because it's gonna last the day, it's got the hardware encoding to accelerate those tasks, and it has the display to get the most out of your footage and make sure that everything looks right. But let's say that you're a freelance game asset designer. You model things and render them in Blender and you work at home and the office. You want the maximum performance and it's gonna be on a desk at home or a desk at work. This is your guy. The MSI will smoke Apple Silicon in that use case just as much as Apple Silicon is gonna smoke the MSI in a video editing scenario. So really, I can't tell you which one of these to buy. You probably already knew that because there's a decent chance that you're hate watching this video. Although you probably wouldn't have made it this far. So either way, it's gonna be up to you. It really does depend. And I know that's not the answer that people wanna see. I know people wanna see Apple Silicon destroys Intel or Intel destroys crappy MacBook, but that has never and will never be the case. And until then, both of these machines are fantastic. And so are you guys for watching this video. It's probably a long one, so I appreciate you sticking with me. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video.